Hey yo, what's good? Welcome to what will be your new favorite MMA sports betting channel, Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, aka Mr. Make This Pick Real Quink. I'm here alongside my bro host extraordinaire. It's Ray Bucks. It's Chaikel Jordan. It's the Black Nostradamus. It's Black Moses leading the people to the promised land of milk and honey. Let's go. And last but not least, it's the birthday boy today. Appreciate y'all. Yeah. So that's how we're going to start things off. Our first edition of this show. We're doing it on my bro's birthday for the first UFC fight night card of the year. And just fight card in general. Uh, it's going to be a light heavyweight bout between Magomed Ankalaev going up against Johnny Walker. But we have 12 fights to run down. So let's start with the first one in the prelims. Uh, we got a flyweight bout between Felipe Bunes going up against Joshua Van. Let's see here. Felipe making his UFC debut. Um, he's a ground specialist with a majority of their W's coming by sub. We got Joshua Van on the other side coming in for their third UFC fight. And uh, I would say that they're more so of a stand-up fighter, but they are well-versed in all aspects. What do you got? I think Joshua Van uh, is going to take this. Joshua Van has won his last five fights. He's the younger fighter. Um, in general, the younger fighter is going to take it down. Um, so that's who I'm definitely going to go with. Nice. I'm going with Joshua Van as well. So um, we will see what happens. But uh, I'm definitely I'm feeling like Joshua Van is going to pull this one out. Absolutely. Definitely. All right. All right. We got uh, Tom Nolan going up against Nicholas Mata in a lightweight bout. We got Tom Nolan undefeated at 6-0. and uh, This is going to be their UFC debut as well. And uh, out of those six wins, four of them have came by TKO and two of them have came by decision. Uh, me personally, I'm going to be going with Tom Nolan in this one. Yeah, I think I got to agree with you on that one. Mota's uh, one and two in the UFC. And uh, was KO, KO by old ass Jim Miller. Now, more on Jim Miller later, but uh, if you're getting knocked out by 40 year old men um, in the fight game, don't catch me on the streets. Yeah. More, more, on, <laughs> more on old niggas in general later on in the show. Hey, don't catch me in the streets. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't think, I think you should hang the gloves up uh, in the UFC. Yeah, I mean, uh, Moda actually. Would have lost his last fight and would be one in three in the UFC had they not uh, got a favor gifted to him by the referee in their last fight by messing up what was going to be a submission finish by Trey Ogden, but the referee stepped in too soon and Moto was able to actually like argue the decision, so they ended up making it a no contest. So. I would say that Mota's probably fighting for his job at this point. I could agree with you. All right. Next up. Oh, you know what? I still got these fucking earmuffs on. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> these motherfuckers are comfortable, bro. That shit happens. Like, if these go on, it's almost a definite that I'm going to end up doing what I just did now. Like, oh, shit, I still got earmuffs on. <laughs> for those who were watching, those were headphones. <laughs> you didn't just hear me say earmuffs. <laughs> anyway, we're out here in Colorado. Fuck y'all niggas. Anyway. Um... <laughs> <laughs> next, next up, we got a featherweight bout between Weston Wilson going up against Jean Silva. Um, it's crazy. Uh, I want to say that this is Jean Silva's UFC debut as well, which is crazy that you got three debuts. I want to say, maybe I'm tripping. We'll have to get back to y'all now. Y'all can leave it in the comments. Let me know if I'm stupid as fuck or not. But uh, we got Wilson at 34 years old. They lost their UFC debut in their last fight on a short notice uh, bout between them and uh, Joe Anderson Brito. Uh, I only believe that Wilson is here again because of that favor that he did. But it doesn't appear that the UFC was that grateful because they're putting him up against a killer in Silva. What do you got? Wilson's a tomato can. That's his, you know what I mean? Call apples, apples, and oranges, oranges. And tomato cans, tomato cans. So it was one of his last five fights. He's going to continue to win. This is just a layup. 
Okay. Any anything else? No, that's pretty much it. <laughs> well, ass whooping are coming. <laughs> All right. Well, if y'all if you couldn't tell, we will both be going with Sean Silva in this fight. Uh, next up we got a bounty. <laughs> My bad. All right, here we go. Bantamweight bout between Fareed Brasharat going up against Taylor Lapolis. Um, Fareed, uh, one half of the Bash brothers. Um, well-rounded fighter, undefeated. Uh, majority of their wins coming by submission, though. Uh, but don't sleep on Lapolis. What, what, what do you feel about Lapolis? Lapolis was on a five-win win streak. Um, he is a live dog in this. Um, Definitely. He... He has the possibility to win this fight. Um, I am picking Basharat, um, but I'm not putting a lot of money on it if I do decide to uh, go that route. Um, nor will he be in any of my lineups because um, I do believe uh, Taylor Lapolis has a puncher's chance in this. Yeah, my 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 pick lies with Basharat, but my lineups and bets are going to be going with Lapolis because I do believe that. They have the skills to beat Bashara. It's just that their only back, their only drawback is the time in between their fights. Prior to their last fight, they were uh, away from the sport for like two years, uh, recovering from injury and things like that. They actually had a stint in the UFC prior to that layoff. Um, so now they're back, and I believe that the UFC sees the potential and are ready to let him spread his wings barring any you know um circumstances unfortunate circumstances so uh next up after that we got another bantamweight fight between marcus mcgee going up against gaston bellano uh marcus mcgee uh 2-0 in the ufc since entering all violence everything that this man throws is expected to have uh, ill intent behind it and um i believe that they're gonna uh make quick work in this fight um whether it be standing up or on the ground yeah just look at marcus mcgee's face uh man is a monster <laughs> he's, got, he's, got, he's got like one of those pit bull heads very much like a a, a dark-skinned uh, uh danny trejo uh, looks like he just beats people's up, beat pe beats people up in dark alleys. Um, he's a, a great stand-up fighter, um, and I just don't see any way uh, that Pretty Boy Gaston is not going to get his ass beat by this this uh, this beast. It's crazy because from what I've seen uh, watching McGee, he's actually a pretty mild-mannered character. Like he goes in there and fucking handles business, but then when it's done, nice. Calm demeanor, you know, uh, shows mad respect and goes about his day. Yeah, his face looks like he's been in knife fights. All right. <laughs> Next up, we got a welterweight bout between Matt Simmelsberger going up against Preston Parsons. I'm going to be honest, I don't have a lot on Preston Parsons. Uh, what I do know about Matt Samuelsberger is that he's definitely got all the skills. It's just that when faced against stiff competition, he just hasn't been able to break through. Um, definitely has a better resume of the fighters. Um, but once again, that resume is littered with some losses to some, you know, better competition. But I, I still am going with Matt Simmelsberger in this fight. Simmelsberger will kill this man. This is my lock of the night. Uh, you heard it here first. Lock of the night, okay. Lock of the night. Uh, that's strong. He's that's, got, that's a lot of confidence. He's just got a better, like you said, a better resume. He's a better fighter. Um, I just don't see any way that Preston Parsons is going to beat him. Um, I think in every category, whether it's uh, stand-up or on the ground, Smesselburgers wins. I feel you. I feel you. you did you say Smesselsburger? Smesselsburger. <laughs> Schmegma. Wow. <laughs> uh, moving on to the, the main. 
<laughs> the feature bout of the prelims, uh, we got a heavyweight fight between OG Andre Arlovsky going up against Waldo Cortez Acosta. Um, fun fact about Acosta, he's a former major league pitcher and uh, has been able to actually carry some of those skills over into the octagon, you know, in terms of just some of that 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 athletic prowess from baseball actually, you know, benefiting him in the way that he's able to move in the cage. So that's pretty dope. Uh, you got Andre Arlovsky, who literally, I mean, early 2000s veteran of the heavyweight division. Um, out of their last six fights, they've lost their last two. But before that, we're on a four-fight winning streak well into their 40s, all by decision, which means our guy still got the gas tank. You know, he's still competing at a high level. But unfortunately, in those last two losses, he got his chin tapped, and it's starting to look like that's weathering now. So the last person you really want to step into the ring with is a major league pitcher who's gunning for your chin. And I agree. I'm glad you gave this man his flowers. I'll be sure to throw them into the grave on top of his casket. He is going to die. Acosta is going I'm a, I'm, you, to beat the you do your brakes thing, I'm a, I'm a smoke. this man. <laughs> it just did mean it is what it is. This man is going down like a Cadillac with four flats. Like old boy He's yesterday, stop moving like homeboy yesterday, <laughs> bro. Yo, I'm I'm literally coming to this man's house yesterday. I'm hitting the call box on his apartment and shit, and I hear boom <gasps> right behind me. And you know, if you've ever heard a car crash, that sound is pretty distinct. Re like regardless how it happens, whether it's car on car, car on building, car on pole, in this case. Uh, appeared the gentleman, you know, passed out behind the wheel. Not sure what the circumstances behind that was, but uh, hopped out that motherfucker uh, in better condition than some of these niggas do in the fights. <laughs> after taking a fucking, <laughs> after taking one to the chin. Yeah. So uh, salute to him. Uh, hope he's okay. And uh, yeah. I don't even know why I even started talking about that. Because uh, the shit happened. Uh, <laughs> also, it was uh, old man, oh, old man Cadillac Four Flats. There you go. There you go. Uh, you said Andre Arlovsky, our beloved Andre Arlovsky. Beloved. Is, is, yeah. is going to go down like a Cadillac with four flats. <laughs> and you will be speaking about this man in the past tense after this fight. <clears throat> oh, man. Come on, man. Say something nice, at least. What, what do you got nice to say about old niggas in UFC uh, or old niggas like yourself in general uh, or, you know, our guy Andre Arlovsky, Jim Miller? You know, come on. Uh, Arlovsky is a UFC veteran. So there's that. Jim Miller. I'll go ahead and uh, give him his flowers, you know what I mean, when we get to that. <coughs> Me, just a pretty motherfucker. What more do you want? All right. I'm not going to I'm not going to disagree. You know, you're my brother. You handsome, you handsome dude. I'm I'm a handsome dude, you know. Yes. And that's what makes Bros Talk MMA so great. <laughs> Not only do you get expert analysis, uh, expert analysis, uh, but you also get some eye candy too. Hopefully, we got some uh, lady viewers. You know, please make yourself known if that's the case, because you know we don't need uh, any more dudes than there already are <laughs> in this, and even just right now. You know. So, uh, anyways, I digress. We are moving in to the main card, folks. First up on the main card, we got a middleweight bout between Phil Hawes going up against Bruno Fiera. 
Um, just like the last fight, really the only issue that uh, I got with Hobbs is that he's mad chinny. Like, um, he can definitely, you know, impose himself on somebody. But uh, if, if they get to his chin before he can, you know, get some action going, more than likely he's going to go down. So uh, that, that's really all I got. You got Bruno Fiera coming off of the Contender Series, uh, nicknamed the Hulk. What else? And this man's going to catch an easy win. Uh, this man, he, he's a, a big dude. He, he looks like a monster. He looks like the Hulk. I mean, I see why they uh, gave him the nickname. Um, if you've been paying attention, I've pretty much been calling uh, locks for like the last four fights. This is going to be lock four for me. Um, I'm going to parlay McGee, or McGee, sorry, McGee, uh, Smesselberger, and <laughs> Acosta, and Bruno. Um, I think uh, you really can't lose with that four-pick parlay. You heard it here first, Black Nostradamus. Yep, Michael Jordan has spoken. Next up, we got a bantamweight bout between Ricky Simone going up against Mario Batista. This is going to be a really good fight. This this has a uh, potential to be fight of the night for sure. Uh, you got Ricky Simone with a great uh, wrestling base, decent hands uh, at this point now, um, a staple in the bantamweight division, uh, just still trying to find his way, you know, to break through from being just that, that main Carter kind guy, you know, so... Um, I feel like if he can get his wrestling going, then, you know, it's going to be a Ricky Simone kind of night. But Mario Batista is, again, just one of these new school, all around, you know, just great fighter, uh, can take it to the ground, uh, very good in stand-up, leg kicks are nasty. Um, I would say that this is probably as close to a toss-up that you can get on this card. But if you had a gun to my head, I guess I would definitely uh, edge Batista in this. What do you got? Uh, edge, no. Batista will slap some more. He's going to slap him around the cage. He's going to slap him for three rounds. Do I think he's going to knock him out? Probably not. But uh, he's going to look like he was uh, ridden hard, put away wet after oh. Batista's done. Oh. Anything else? <laughs> what more do you need? Uh, not that. I didn't need to. Didn't need to say my boy is gonna get hung up wet. Hey, right, bro. I'm just telling the truth out here. Right. Well, once again, the chike man has spoken. Next up, we got a lightweight bout between another OG. You know, uh. We got Jim Miller going up against Gabriel Benitez in a lightweight bout. Uh, Jim uh, Jim Miller, uh, north of 40 years old. Uh, Gabriel Benitez, not too far behind him, but uh, Jim Miller has been fighting in the UFC since 2008 and uh, has even battled Lyme disease in the midst of his career and is still out here knocking motherfuckers out or choking motherfuckers out just as recent as last year and um, actually with one of these dudes on the car, uh, Nicholas Mata. He knocked Nicholas Mata out. So, um... I'm definitely going with Jim Miller on this one. I mean, the only thing I think that that could get in his way at this point is his age. And it doesn't seem to be hindering him one bit. So, yeah, Miller will win. Um, you know what I mean? I don't hate all old guys. You know what I mean? I believe it. I believe in Jim Miller. <laughs> I think he's solid. Uh, and he'll probably beat uh, being as uh, handily. Um, Miller is a... Uh, Justin Gaethje before Justin Gaethje. Um, he's leaving everything in the cage. Um, I don't think we've seen too many fights with Jim Miller where um, Wait, what? it was a, a, a half-assed performance, so you don't think that he came in prepared. 
Um, has he been knocked the fuck out? Of course he's been knocked the fuck out. He's been in more fights. He, he's probably lost more fights than most of these people on this card have been in, uh, yeah. just short of Orlovsky. Um, so, I mean, Jim Miller's, uh, he's going to go down as one of the, uh, the, the toughest dudes in the UFC, um, when everything's all said and done, but, uh, he has he's the not, most wins. Yeah, he's not looking like he's slowing down anytime soon. So out of all, out of all divisions, that's crazy. Yeah, he I did not the know most that. Wins in UFC history. Uh, actually, that bout he had with uh, Donald Cerrone, he uh, choked him out. Yep. That gave him uh, most wins. Yeah, gave it, gave it to him. And then he went to go on from there. You know, Cerrone retired, and Miller went to you know add on to that. <laughs> so he's a he's a G. Like this fool is a gangster. Uh I'm not sure about Justin Gaethje before Justin Gaethje. I guess maybe in terms of just like he definitely has a lot of highlights. Uh but Gaethje definitely just be he be knocking motherfuckers. Sending them to the shadow realm and shit. So <laughs> <laughs> there's a difference. I just wanna say there's a difference. I guess uh I was I, I'm more saying that uh he, he he never uh, he never leaves. He never anything puts behind. on a boring fight. He never puts on a boring fight, and uh, I think he's he's left it all in the ring by the end of the, the bell. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. I got you. I got you. I got you. Our next fight, which is the main event of the evening. We got a light heavyweight bout between Magomed Ankalaev going up against Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker is explosive. He can end you anytime from anywhere in that cage. The problem with that I see with him is that when the stakes are high, he decides to start playing it real safe. And that is not what got you to the show, my guy. Like, so Message. what I suggest is that Johnny Walker uh, needs to definitely let his hands go or just let his arsenal of just, you know, violence go on Magomed, uh, especially pressure wise, uh, to be able to uh, win this fight. Because the longer it goes, it's going to play into Magomed's hands and also... Um, I do believe that Magomed is is the better, more skilled fighter, more technical fighter who has no issues with point fighting this man to the uh, fifth round bell and uh, specializes in what some would call boring fights. Oh, great jab, great top game uh, went on the ground, but... For some reason, the universe has just found a way to steer Ankalaev away from the title pitcher. It, it's, it's crazy how it happens. This dude has some of the worst luck uh, since uh, Leon Edwards pre-winning uh, the title. So it's like, um, uh should win this fight, but I do believe Johnny Walker has all the skills necessary to end this fight, which is what I believe is the only way he can win this fight, is if he ends it. Uh, Uncle Ive can definitely end this fight too. He just, he's the type who likes to play with his food a little bit more when he's in the cage. So I'm going with Uncle Ive, but I would say that this fight could go either way. But if I, if I, if you're, Putting a gun in my head, I'm gonna pick Uncle Liev. I gotta go with Uncle Liev. He's he's a uh, he's a Russian monster. He's he's part of that that Dagestani heritage, uh, and all they do is raise killers over there. Um, do I think he's going to end Johnny Walker? No, but he's going to grapple Johnny Walker to death. I think his strike defense can uh, inhibit Johnny Walker from landing the shots he really wants to land. Um, and I don't think Johnny Walker has any ground and pound or, or ground game 
or grappling that's gonna he be, has good jujitsu, but wrestling good wrestling trumps good, good jujitsu always every every day of the week. So uh, I think Ankalaev takes this, um, and I, 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 I there is the. I don't think there's a chance of this Johnny Walker's going to land one of those crazy shots, the spinning back fist, flying knees, uh, some crazy haymaker. I just, I, I don't really see it uh, coming out of him because um, Ankle has just too high of a ring IQ to allow that to happen. Um, he, I think he knows the danger that's in Johnny Walker's hands, and he's not going to uh, feed into it. When I mention luck in terms of, you know, the – the way things have uh, ended up for Uncle Liev. Uh, it The same actually does go for Walker, too. Uh, he has had a crazy trajectory of being, you know, a top prospect to just kind of like this mid-card guy who hasn't been able to break through. Everybody knows him because they've seen him have these spectacular finishes. But in terms of being a contender, well, he... he, he Fucked his shoulder up, celebrating after a victory, which, you know, that that literally changed everything. And then uh, I've just seen him in a couple of instances where there were stakes on the line for him to start, you know, getting up there into that upper echelon. And he just fought too conservative and basically, you know, found his way out of uh, contention again. So I think that what Walker has going for him into this fight is he appears to be pretty fucking angry. And the reason is because how the fight between them uh, ended uh, last year, where it was a no contest due to an illegal blow that I believe was thrown by Uncle Liev. And it led to this big melee in the freaking uh, cage, the teams, you know, flying, you know, flying around at each other, and just all this chaos, and it just ended very uh, oddly and controversially. So uh, they're running it back again. Johnny Walker said, "Like I'm coming in there to finish. It. Like I'm finishing this dude," which you know, of course, that what everybody wants to do. And, uh, you know, that's way easier said than done with a guy like Uncle Liev, who is just kind of like one of those, uh, he like just like shuts shit down. It's almost like he, he shuts you down and then just starts impo in, imposing himself on you. And uh, whether that's through just jabbing you to death or, you know, breaking you to the point of getting you on the ground and just dominating you. Overkill. Um, I mean, that, that's what very well could happen but uh like i said johnny walker he any, any time at any time you know what was he's that? got those crazy ass what eyes too like you ever seen that boy's like all right he does some weird ass pause again like that. yeah <sighs> crazy eyes don't win fights not all the time because i've seen this motherfucker get beat yeah <laughs> crazy <laughs> eyes never win fights bro uh well, I would say outside of Lapalus, uh, Johnny Walker is going to be my live dog of the evening. And uh, neither one of these guys are going to be someone that I uh, put into a parlay or into a fantasy lineup. Um, even given the five rounds and, you know, the, the, the violence that they could impose on one another. We saw this in uh, the last pay-per-view of 2023 with Kobe Covington and Leon Edwards. I mean, to know that they weren't going to net more fantasy points than Irene Aldana and Carol Hosa. <laughs> that's, that's another story. Shout-outs to the guys that we want picks. Uh, Angelo, Jacob, Freckle Salamander. Uh, I got a three pick safety parlay. Uh, I'm going to say that if you're going to do a parlay, which we don't condone, we here at Bros Talk MMA do not condone the usage of parlays or round robins due to personal experience. As recently as last week or the last time I bet fights uh, before the break, 
But if you're going to do it, we're going to try and, you know, get you out on the right foot to begin 2024. So my safety three pick parlay of this fight card is going to be Tom Nolan, John Silva, and Marcus McGee. What about you? This is Ray Bucks, a.k.a. the Parlay God. Oh. I'm going to give you, I, I gave you guys the parlay already, but I'll give it to you again. It's Marcus McGee. It's Matt Smesselberger. It's uh, Waldo Cortez Acosta. It's Bruno Fiera. And it's, oh no, that's it. Just a four. That's a four picker. Okay. So you know what I mean? Okay, Quick little four picker. Up the stakes a little bit, huh? I'm just saying. I mean, who you would, heard you, it here who first. would you throw in there if you were really trying to spice it's shit up? Spicy. If I was trying to spice it up and make it a fiver, uh, I'd probably throw old man Jim Miller. Ooh. Old man Jim Miller. Yeah. Make it real, real solid. Yes, sir. And if I was going to get real wild, Low stakes, low money. Just throw a buck on it. Yeah. I'd say it's Mario me, Batista. Mario. Mario Batista, for sure. For sure. That's going to be a good-ass fight. Um, I guess, lastly, uh, I just want to run down some names that, for me, are definitely going to be some <laughs> staples in my uh, fantasy lineups. So, uh, definitely putting Tom Nolan, John Silva, um... Let's see, Marcus McGee, uh, Taylor Lapalus, uh, in, in terms of like so the dark horses, dark horses are definitely going to be Taylor Lapalus, uh, Jim Miller, uh, Matthias Nicolau, but also um, Bruno Fiera, Mario Batista. Um, don't get me wrong, Ricky Simone, I'm going to have to flip flop with him in some of those uh, lineups. Uh, possibly might have to flip flop. Who was it that I saw? Jim Miller and Gabriel Benitez, man. I, I said, no, we were, we were giving Jimmy his flowers, but man, like I would feel, I would feel crazy. You've been out here loving old guys all day. Pause. <laughs> 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 well, let's drop the fucking the whole device here, bro. Hey, man. Hey, all, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, hey, you're like, hey, hey yo. yo. <laughs> all of a sudden, you want to back out on it. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has been the first edition for the first fight of 2024 on my bro's birthday of Bro's Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick. <laughs> I'm here with my brother and uh, bro host extraordinaire, Ray Bucks, Chico Jordan, Black Nostradamus, what was my new one? The Parlay God himself, mm -hmm. Black Moses, leading my people to the promised land of cash and honey. Make sure you like and subscribe. <coughs> Leave a comment. <coughs> Let us know your picks. <coughs> Let us know your thoughts. <coughs> and uh, we will see you again on the next one for a uh, pay-per-view. What is this? Is a 297? Mm. UFC 297 in Canada. Um, and also just announced, uh, they got a straw weight title fight coming up later on this year between, uh, Zhang Wei Li and Zhao now, Z Yang, Yang Zhao. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! That shit's gonna be a banger. Yep. Two Asian, uh, lady fighters, I believe, right? Yes. Yes. Who throw hands. Hands. Definitely. Once again, this has been Bros Talk MMA. We out.